Hey guys and girls, uh, Joshy here, BJ on Race Day, back for another one. And tonight we have the Melbourne Cup special. Uh, as usual, I've got Bogan with me for uh, another edition of Supercoach Racing. G'day Bogan, how are you buddy? Yeah, I'm going good, going good, looking forward to this race. This is the one that everyone will be talking about, where everyone comes out of the woodwork and becomes a horse racing expert. It'd be nice for a change this year to actually uh, have a little bit of a background, thanks to the Supercoach Racing yeah, mate, I think uh, for a lot of people at home, they'll know a little bit more than they usually do, anyone who's playing super coach like us. But um, for anyone that isn't, uh, we're obviously going to just run through all 24 horses the Melbourne Cup, give you some tips on why they can win and why they can't. And, uh, mate, yeah, so obviously we want to reach out to the super coach world, uh, but also the, the general public as well. Hopefully we can help you with those office sweeps or the tips. If you're going to have five each way a horse or, you know, as much as you want, uh, we'll try and steer in the right direction. But, um, <laughs> mate, uh, today, uh, look, it's Saturday evening. We've just had uh, the last round of Supercoach. Uh, myself, personally, uh, didn't go too crash hot, mate. 253. Uh, sort of not too bad a score week to week. But uh, this week, as I said uh, in the video earlier in the week, there would be plenty of high scores. And I've seen a couple of 330s and 340s already. So uh, some guys out there going very, very well. But, uh, mate, Melbourne Cup. It's what we're here to do this video. We're going to run through the 24 runners. And uh, the draw came out tonight. We had the Hotham Stakes as the last race uh, to put a horse into the race. And that was won by Downdraft. Uh, I think I called it Downshaft on uh, one of the other videos. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Downdraft, it managed to get the money there in the Hotham Stakes. And it joins the field of 24 runners. Now, mate, uh, very much an international field. We've... Uh, we don't really have too many Australian bred horses or Australian um, Australian horses. There's a few international horses that are now based in Australia. So I, I, I think I yeah. counted. I think I counted two Australian horses. It might be two or three. Um, as we go through, we'll see. But um, yeah, um, it, it's it's interesting that the the race that stops the nation uh, becoming the race that stops the world be up there with all all of your your classic global global races soon enough if, if not already yeah mate look there's plenty in obviously the racing world that do watch the melbourne cup i think it's definitely become one of those races where everyone around the world does sort of tune in to watch it similar to the grand national you've got over in the uk now it obviously doesn't get as big a scale as that but um yeah we're definitely heading that right direction and with the amount of runners that we get from ireland japan germany france everywhere like that it's really really going ahead and leaps and bounds so You've obviously had uh, long-time supporters of the race, like the Godolphin Stables and and Coolmore and things like that. These are big, big outfits from around the world that own hundreds and thousands of horses. And every year they find their best couple of stayers to send down and, and try and take the money from us Aussies. So in a field of 24, the fact that we've only got two Aussie bred runners, uh, we've definitely got to try and defend our turf. But uh, as you'll see, guys, there, uh, number one for the race is Cross Counter. Now, this is the defending champion. Uh, this is the horse that won last year's race. Um, it is chained, trained by Charlie Appleby and will be ridden by William Buick. Now, William Buick is a British jockey, uh, so he's come over to take the ride. Now, look, guys, when we look at the Melbourne Cup, uh, there's a few things to note. And first thing is it's over 3,200 metres. So 3,200 metres is traditional distance of the Melbourne Cup in two miles. This horse, Cross Counter, ran that quite well last year to win the race. Guys, you'll see next to their names, their kilograms. That's the weight of the jockey that they've got to have on board. Cross counter last year, one with 51 kilos. Now, uh, for the jockeys, it does help if you're a lighter jockey, a lighter weight, because obviously that's a little bit easier to run around a whole track with uh, in two miles long. But um, has a bit of a weight increase this year for cross counter, 57 and a half kilos. It's form coming into the race this year. Uh, hasn't been quite what it was last year. Uh, it has look. It has been running in some tougher races uh, over there in um, in the UK, uh, but it's been running be behind the likes of Stradivarius, which is the world's greatest stayer at the moment, uh, and been get getting beat, but pretty close behind him. So the fact he is probably the best stayer in the race, uh, but that 57 and a half kilos really puts the test to him, especially when some of his other key opponents get in pretty light at the weight. So. Um, he does have it against him to go back to back. He's currently around about $15 in markets. Um, so anyone who wants to get on him to go back to back, he wouldn't be the first one to do it. Obviously, we remember Maccabi Diva doing it not too long ago, and she went three on the trot. But uh, he's going to have to be really good to do what she did. 
The second runner there is Murder Glass. Now, Murder Glass uh, was the <laughs> the Japanese, thanks to our little Japanese anime girl, um, representing the Japanese there. Murder Glass will this, have Damien Lane on board. This is my pick too. This is I'm, your pick. I'm going, I'm going Murder Glass for certain reasons. Yep. yep. Look, um, the Japanese horses have served me well through throughout this uh, spring carnival. Well, mate, wh- one thing we we um, we know uh, from the Japanese is when they do bring out their runners, they're always so in such good uh, such good form, uh, always here ready to perform. So, uh, Murdergla ran well in the Caulfield Cup, uh, took that victory there. There is some massive question marks over it at the two mile. Guys and girls, anyone out there sort of who follows the form or anything like that, you might see a lot of these horses run over 2,000 metres, 2,400 metres. It is a massive step up. Even the difference between 2,400 to 3,200 metres, it is huge for these horses. Now, plenty of horses in the past have actually been found out by the extra 800 metres. Plenty of horses, there's been the thoughts behind that uh, they'll do it easy. They've been well in the market and they've finished 20th or 21st or, you know, near enough to run last. So... That'll be the biggest challenge for Murder Glass. It has drawn well, much like Cross Counter. It's uh, drawn an inside barrier. Now, this is absolutely essential in the Melbourne Cup. While it is over 3,200 metres, they start in the Flemington Strait, uh, and there is a fair run to the, the first turn. So there is plenty of distance there for horses to get closer to the rail, where the running is that little bit better, and they don't have to run as far. But what I will say with that is, by the time they get to the first turn, there's always horses that you see three and four wide, and really on a trip that's this long, uh, that is a disadvantage to the horse. So, guys, you will um, you will see the inside horses with the advantage. Uh, Cross counters drawn barrier five, murder glass barrier two. I will point out as well that this year's Melbourne Cup, this is probably one of the first times I've ever seen it for a long, long time, where all of the good horses have actually drawn closer to the rails. I think there may be only one or two horses in the market that have drawn worse than barrier 12 or 14. So um, I really don't think we're going to find a winner this year that is a roughie. I think that the winner of the Melbourne Cup this year will will definitely be better than sort of 15 to 1. Um, Anything, if it wins outside from 20 to 1, will be a massive, massive surprise. So yeah, Murder Glass, it is currently equal favourite in the race. Now, after the barrier draw, it came into favouritism. Uh, equal with Constantinople. Uh, So, look, again, I've got my huge doubts on it running 3,200 metres. I'm going to absolutely steer clear of it. There's no doubting the class of this horse, uh, but it's one I'm going to avoid purely because of that distance. Uh, The next horse on the list there is Master of Reality. Now, it's drawn uh, the one barrier and is going to be ridden by Frankie Dettori. Now, Frankie Dettori is well considered the world's greatest jockey. Uh, He has been around a very, very long time. I think he's probably close to 50 now, maybe even above 50. But Frankie has ridden in 17 Melbourne Cups and not once has he ever ridden the winner. So, uh, look, this is a a race that he will be desperate to win. Uh, This could be the horse that wins it for him. It's currently 15 to 1 in the market. It's trained by Joseph O'Brien. Joseph O'Brien has been the best trainer in the UK for the past 20 to 30 years. Uh, look, this horse is quite an inexperienced horse, but again, like Cross Counter, it has plenty of form around all the good UK stayers. Uh, 55 and a half kilo is a good bit of weight for him to carry. Um, so, guys, there'll be plenty of people who are sort of back in this. I think it may firm up in the odds a little bit, maybe to 11 or $12. Uh, but uh, at the moment, I might have it in trifectas and first fours, but I won't be taking it uh, for the win. Uh, the fourth horse there is Mirage Dancer. Now, Mirage Dancer um, is actually now trained in Australia. Um, again, as you can see there from its country of origin, Great Britain, former UK horse, doesn't have form. Another one that doesn't have form around the 3,200 metres. It has never raced beyond 2,400 metres, which is actually quite surprising uh, for a UK-based stayer. So my... My sort of thoughts on this one is it's probably not as dour a stayer as Cross Counter or the likes. The fact that it's got 55 and a half kilos on it for its first run there at 3,200 metres does worry me a little bit. Uh, you'll find it is $31 in the market. So its price really reflects that inexperience at 3,200 metres. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, this could just be a cracking stayer. It did run third in the, uh, in the Caulfield Cup behind Murder Glass and was coming home quite hard. So 
Um, again, as I say, that form at 2,400 metres doesn't necessarily mean it'll run it, but it's shown good signs so far. Uh, now, the fifth horse on the page there is Southern France. Now, probably the best-named horse in the race. Uh, we'd all love to live there, but uh, very, very good horse, this one. Uh, again, has plenty of form around Cross Counter and Stradivarius and those world-class stayers. So 55 and a half kilos again. Barrier 14 is not too bad. Sort of middle of the running there. Uh, it's got Mark Zara on board. We saw how he uh, went today on thought of that slash thought of time. Guys, I called, I've called it thought of thought of time on every single feed, every single Facebook page. It was my captain in Supercoach that scored a measly four points uh, and Mark Zara was on board. So, uh, look, hopefully he can uh, put up a better showing on this horse. Now, uh, Southern France at the moment, let me just grab the odds there for the market. It is currently $26. Now, I actually think this is overs. Uh, the form that this horse has got over in the UK, this is definitely overs. It should probably be about 14 or 15 to 1. Uh, it doesn't have quite as good a form as Cross Counter, uh, but it's only a length or two off. So if it can really adapt to uh, Australian way of going, it is now trained down here, so you will see it stay in Australia. Trained by Kieran Ma and David Eustace. Very, very good training combination. Uh, can see this one really playing a part. Whether he can win, it may be a tad too far, but he can definitely finish in the top three or five. Uh, once we go past that, we get to number six, and we have Hunting Horn. Uh, now, for Aidan O'Brien, oh, I should correct myself. From the first page there, I mentioned Joseph O'Brien. Aidan O'Brien is uh, the legendary trainer, been the best in the UK for 20 to 30 years. Joseph O'Brien is his son. Uh, so, definitely uh, had his apprenticeship and done it well. Joseph O'Brien actually won the race last year uh, with, uh, sorry, two years ago. Um, so he'll be looking to get his second one. Uh, his father, like Frankie de Torre, hasn't won one. So um, he's got a good chance here in Hunting Horn. Uh, 30 to 1 in the market at the moment. Look, it probably, again, it's another one that's got better form over 2,000 to 2,400 metres. For me, uh, and I think you can sort of tell by the way I look at these horses, I really have a bit more of a look at the horses that have experience over 3,200 metres or at least 2,800 metres. Horses that really run in the strong races, like the Ebor Handicap and a few like that over in the UK, uh, which are over 2,800 metres, tend to be able to run that 3,200. So again, this one here doesn't have too much experience over the, the distance, uh, but it could surprise. A uh, little bit of a risky record there, 22 starts for three wins. Uh, it did win last start at Mooney Valley on its first trip to Australia. So. Uh, maybe one to watch. Now, next runner, number seven, is Latrobe. Now, this has drawn the car park for a horse that would have been uh, in the market. It's probably drifted a little bit. Yep, you'll see it's uh, currently $23. I think uh, a week or two ago, it was about $15 or $16. So, unfortunately, it has drawn very, very badly in Barrier 22. Another one that's trained by Joseph O'Brien. It's got the gun jockey, James McDonald on it from New Zealand. Uh, he will definitely find a way for, to win on this horse if it is good enough. Now, this horse was actually set for the Melbourne Cup last year. Unfortunately, uh, I think they might have withdrawn it from the race. Uh, I think it did make the field, or it was high enough to make the field, but they withdrew it from the race. They instead decided to give it another year for its Melbourne Cup debut, and it ran in the McKinnon Stakes. Uh, now, the McKinnon Stakes is run next Saturday. It is a Group 1 and it finishes out the Melbourne Cup Carnival. It ran second in that race, beaten, I think, about a quarter of a length. So um, definitely has Group 1 form in Australia. Uh, some good form overseas. If it had have drawn a lot closer to the fence, uh, I definitely would have had it in my, in my multiples, uh, in my exotics. Uh, but for now, uh, I think you've sort of got to leave this one alone. Uh, Mustajir. Now, Mustajir raced another one out of the Caulfield Cup. Uh, this is probably a little smoky. It's trained in uh, Australia now by Chris Lees. Damien Oliver on board now. He had an absolutely massive day today, Damien Oliver. Three winners in a second. Riding in uh, very, very good form. He's um, he's definitely improved over the last week or two where we've seen him sort of butcher a couple of rides. Uh, had a cracking day today. Mustaji ran sixth in the Caulfield Cup now. Um, had nothing go its way in the Caulfield Cup. Hit ass after ass of every other horse. Never got clear until right at the end was flying home uh, but again it's another one that doesn't have too much form at 3200 meters so you just have to have that little doubt in your mind that mind uh, that it can run that distance uh, barrier six definitely helps it 
it should be able to settle around about midfield, maybe a little bit less than midfield, uh, and find its way on the inside running rail and should be able to come home. Davian Oliver really knows how to uh, find his way around Flemington. He is gunning for a fourth record fourth Melbourne Cup as a jockey. So uh, he's won it three times in the past, most famously back in 2002 on Media Puzzle, a week after his brother died. So, um, yeah, very, very good jockey and can see this one factoring in the finish. Currently $18 in the market. Uh, it has already firmed up. It was $21 after the barrier draw tonight. There's already been a few big bets on it, so a good sign there. Uh, the next one is Rostropovic. Now, Rostropovic raced in last year's Melbourne Cup. It finished fifth out of 24 runners. Uh, this year, its form has been nowhere near that. So um, a little bit of uh, doubt around that because of that form line. Uh, drawn solidly in Barrier 12. It's got Dwayne Dunn on board, uh, a, another uh, sort of senior jockey who's in cracking form. Uh, so Dwayne Dunn can definitely steer this horse around the park. But... Um, yeah, just with his poor form, it's really, really hard to see this fella figuring. Uh, running fifth last year, he's $61. So plenty of questions about him and what he can do in this year's race. Uh, number 10, we round out, we get to the double figure numbers and Twilight Payment, currently $81. This horse doesn't have any exposed Australia form. Um, and in the UK, it really wasn't up to those better runners. So uh, this is one that, yeah, we'll start very, very long odds. He's got Huey Bowman on board. Uh, again, Joseph O'Brien trained. So the O'Brien uh, crew have come down with a few horses. I think it's going to be tough for him to even factor in. Barrier 19, 55 kilos. Yeah, it's 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 really going to be tough for him. So I, I'm prepared to put a line through this one. I think he could. he's a chance of sort of running in the top 10, uh, but I don't think he can uh, win the race. Uh, number 11, we've got an... This is a very, very good chance to win. This is Finch. Now, Finch ran fourth in last year's Melbourne Cup. He stayed in Australia after that, and he is trained by Australia's premier trainer, well, New Zealand's premier trainer, who's based here in Australia, in Chris Waller. He's going to be ridden by Karen McAvoy. Now, it's no secret over the past couple of weeks, Karen McAvoy has probably had one of the worst forms uh, for a jockey in the Melbourne Cup and the Sydney Spring Carnival. So um, he's definitely got to turn his form around there. But uh, Finch, on the other hand, has been absolutely fantastic since relocating to Australia. He ran fifth in the Caulfield Cup last week, uh, but he had an absolute horror run. He was three wide the whole way. He did all the running up front. It was probably the tough run he needed to be fit for the 3,200 metres at, Caulfield, uh, at Flemington here. So he's definitely uh, an option for the race. I'm actually going to tip Finch. I think it'll win the race. So I'm hoping from barrier four there, he can probably sit maybe fifth or sixth just behind the leaders, two or three back. And I'm hoping that once they hit the straight, what you see happen in the Melbourne uh, in the Melbourne Cup is the 3,200 metres. You get in the straight, there's about six or seven horses that have already dropped off because they can't see the distance out. The pressure really gets turned on and then four or five horses emerge to finish, uh, fight out the finish. And I really, really think this horse is going to be one of them. Prince of Aaron, last year's place getter, finished third in the race last year. Uh, this year it won the Geelong Cup. Last year it won the Lexus Stake, which was the Hotham Stakes this year, the downdraft one. Look, he's really flown under the radar this year. He's 20 to 1 at the moment in the market. Probably says he's a little bit of overs. Charlie Fellows is an absolute gun trainer. Uh, he's got the solid New Zealand hoop on him on board in Michael Walker. And he can probably repeat his performance from last year. There's nothing, there's nothing to say that he can't. He got a one kilo penalty from the Geelong Cup. His trainers and owners were absolutely screaming out for this. Now, anyone who doesn't know, there's actually a ballot order for the Melbourne Cup. You have to qualify. Um, about a week ago, what's turned into 24 horses, there was actually 42 horses still nominated. Now, 18 of those horses, whether it was through injury or whatever it may be, uh, miss out on the race. Uh, Prince of Aaron, after the Geelong Cup victory, they actually asked for a kilo penalty. Now, this is unheard of, but they wanted to make sure that their horse could get in the race because they thought it was an absolute awesome chance of winning. Charlie Fellows knows when his horses are going to run well. He wouldn't have brought it down here. Otherwise, it's run well in two races, this preparation here in Australia. It can take out the Melbourne Cup. So barrier eight is perfect. Uh, it'll be going in all my multiples. Uh, Raymond Tusk. Now, this is one that we haven't seen in Australia yet, but follows a similar UK form to a few other ones that we've mentioned behind Stradivarius and Cross Counter. 
very, very good horse, this one by all accounts from the UK. I've seen a couple of its runs over there. It is only a young horse, uh, very inexperienced there with only 12 starts, uh, but it comes to Australia. Jamie Spencer on board. Now, Jamie Spencer uh, picked up a race there last week at uh, Caulfield and absolutely cracking ride on Chief Ironside. So um, he obviously uh, is bringing his form down here to Australia. He is one of the UK's premier jockeys. Uh, number 14, and we've got downdraft for John Allen. Uh, this was the horse that won the Hotham Stakes today. Now, I uh, I did call it downshaft. Um, it'll be uh, it'll be downdraft, not downshaft. Very, very good chance. Look, I don't think it's quite up to the form of some of these. It obviously has shown two good runs in Australia. Again, another one that doesn't have 3,200 metre form. So today at Flemington, it raced over 2,500 metres. It did win quite well. I think it put about six lengths on him from the probably the 400 metres to the 200 metres and then got ran to about two lengths. So I think John Allen might have eased it up on the line to save a little bit for Tuesday. So this one moves into the field. Now, surprisingly, a three-day backup is not much for horses. But winners of this race have a really, really good record over the last 10 to 15 years. Um, I think out of the last 10 years, six of them have run in the first four. Six of the winners of the Hotham slash Lexus Stakes have run in the first four. Prince of Aaron last year ran third. So it is actually a really, really good lead-in race. I just just wasn't too sure on the quality of the field today. So definitely in there with a the shot. Uh, 53 and a half kilos is not too bad a weight. John Allen, now that he's won on the horse, it's good to see him get that bit of a confidence booster and uh, he'll give it every chance. Uh, Magic Wand is the next one. Now, Magic Wand has drawn the very, very outside barrier in barrier 24. Uh, currently $23 in the market. Now, that's due to a couple of factors. The first one will, will be that barrier and the second one will be because there's very, very doubts, uh, big doubts around this running the distance. Uh, this was absolutely backed off the map in the Cox Plate. Uh, the Cox Plate won by Lee Grasseur. Uh, it finished fourth in that race. So it battled on okay. Uh, just some massive, massive doubts on it running the distance. The fact that it's probably got one of, you know, the second best jockey trainer combination behind Aiden O'Brien and Frankie Dettori in Aiden O'Brien and Ryan Moore uh, speaks plenty of volumes, though, that they've got confidence in this horse running well. Uh, Ryan Moore next to Frankie Dettori is, yeah, one of the best jockeys in the world. Races all over the world. Uh, and always rides winners. So you can expect it to be uh, competitive, uh, but my tip will be that come the end of the straight, uh, when they cross the finish line, it'll probably be around that 10th to 12th position. Uh, once we move past there, we get to the roughy of the field in Nerf Bosk. Now, number 16, French horse. Uh, we spoke about this actually earlier in, I think it was in the first week video of Supercoach. Now, um, my expectation was this horse would perform in Australia. It has done absolutely anything but. Uh, it's finished near enough to last on all of those runs. 150 to 1. It'll start 200 to 1 by Cup Day. Cannot have it. It's just uh, in too bad a form. The fact that it's in the race, look, I think they're probably taking a position from someone else, but uh, you've got to be in it to win it, as they say. Uh, but that's all I can probably say about it. Uh, the next horse there is Sound. Now, this is uh, an Australian bred one. Uh, so Sound, look, 90 to 1. Sorry, German bred one. 90 to 1. It has been in Australia now for about four or five years. While it's got German breeding, I'm pretty sure they bought it over here as a two or a three-year-old to run a lot of staying races. It's run quite well here in Australia. It ran, I think, 10th in last year's Melbourne Cup. It's not going to run last. That's probably one thing I could say, but, you know... Each way, the bookies only played a, paid a third, and I don't think it'll run in the top three. So, look, yeah, if you've got it in an office sweep, it's not going to get you the last place sweep, but it definitely get, won't get you first, second, or third. Uh, so I'd leave that one alone. Uh, the next one is definitely an Australian bred horse, and this is Surprise Baby. Uh, now, Surprise Baby... Um, actually, I think it might be a Kiwi It's, it's a Kiwi. Uh, according, a Kiwi to, according, to our, yeah. according to our sources, it's a Kiwi. Yeah, look, it's, yeah. there's no it's no Australian horses. We've got these foreign horses coming over, taking our horses' jobs. No, well, you you got a couple. You you got Vow and Declare, and I'm pretty sure you got Young Star. The bottom two are the Australian horses. But look, surprise, baby, it's had most of its start here in Australia. Ran a different form line to most of these coming in. A lot of these European horses have got their form line, or a lot of the uh, horses that run in Australia have got 
the Caulfield Cup form line. This has actually come through more of the secondary uh, horse, uh, horse races in Australia, the Andrew Ramsden and the Bart Cummings. Now, uh, the Bart Cummings after, named after the legendary trainer who trained the 12 winners. At one stage after it won that race, it moved into favoritism. It is now out to $16. So it moved into about $9. It's now out to $16. I, I just don't think it's the class. The fact that it's drawn barrier 20 now, um, it may well run out the 3,200 meters strongly, but the fact is that other horses will probably run it quicker. Um, I think that it can run the 3,200, but I just don't think it'll run it as well as the other ones. So place chance, maybe. Can it win? I'd love to see it win for Jordan Childs. He's a great young jockey. His dad runs Road Sunline for all those years and was one of the best we've ever had. Uh, well, New Zealand's ever had. Again, Aussies haven't produced much in horse racing. Um, but yeah, so we'll uh, we'll see how that one goes. Uh, now the next one there, number 19, is the equal favourite for the race, Constantinople. Uh, Eight dollars, sorry, seven dollars currently in the market, uh, with the barrier draw murder glass firmed into equal favouritism with it. The most inexperienced runner in the race with nine starts. Uh, now, that doesn't bother me whatsoever. Cross Counter won last year's race and it only had seven starts at that stage. Follows the same form line. Uh, it is a three-year-old in Northern Hemisphere, which is a four-year-old over here. Young horse, gets light in on the weights, 52 and a half kilos. Now, the uh, the graders actually made the decision uh, when Cross Counter, after Cross Counter won last year, the horses from the UK that were three-year-old Northern Hemisphere horses used to get 51 and a half kilos. They made the decision to up that to 52 and a half kilos because Rekindling was the horse that won it two years ago for Joe Snow Brian was the same and both of these horses won in pretty dominant fashion. Now, one kilogram doesn't sound like too much difference, but uh, trust me, when your horse is running 3,200 meters and your jockey's moving around on it, and flinging around everywhere, trying to get it to go, it does make a, a little bit of a difference. Um, obviously not the same as five or six kilos that Cross Counter's got, but uh, it will change things. So at the moment, this is a favorite, very, very good chance. He has the magic man on board in Joe Marrera. Now, Luke Nolan, after his ride in the Caulfield Cup, lost the ride on this. It did finish, I think, was it third or fourth in that race? And it was absolutely a good thing beat. It was a huge run. It got knocked from pillar to post. It could have won that race quite easily, quite easily over Murdergla if it had have got a clean run. Luke Nolan lost the ride. Glenn Boss was brought on board. Unfortunately, he got suspended. And now they bring in the pitch hitter of all pitch hitters in Joe Marrera. Uh, this guy rides mostly in Hong Kong, but he is, again, like Frankie Dettori, uh, one of the world's best jockeys. And he seems to be able to get horses to win that no one thinks can win or they look like they're going to lose and he just gets them up. He's just got a, a an uncanny knack of how he reacts with the horses. And, um, yeah, this horse is definitely, definitely a massive chance to win. Uh, number 20 there is Il Paradiso. And before the barrier draw, before Finch drew inside and this one drew outside, this was actually one of my tips. Um, currently in the market, it is $14. Uh, Wayne Lorden comes over from the UK, another horse trained by Aidan O'Brien for Coolmore. Again, his form around Stradivarius, the same kind of form over there. I just think he's got a little bit more upside. Um, he is actually a one start less than Constantinople, so he is the, the least experienced in the race with eight starts. Two wins, two seconds, two thirds. Now, the biggest question mark over this is he's won a maiden and he's probably won the equivalent of a race, not not a metropolitan race anyway. He's, his two races have been nothing like this. Now, there were massive questions over this horse getting into the field. Um, this was the one horse that they thought shouldn't be there because it hasn't won a stakes race. It hasn't won anything of note. Uh, it basically got ballot ordered it in because of a place, the third, which was its second last uh, second last run set two starts ago. That third place run got it into the field. It was a cracking run. It got beat a length and a half by Stradivarius. Again, I keep mentioning that name. That is the best stayer in the world. Um, and this horse went within a length of it. So 52 and a half kilos gets in light there. I don't like the fact that Wayne Lorden's on it. Uh, I just look not really a fan of the jockey over in the UK. Rides plenty of winners, but I don't think he's got the same class as some of these other guys. And I think a horse as young as this really could have benefited from a top class uh, Aussie jockey getting on board. Uh, number 21 is Steel Prince. Steel Prince has been in Australia for about 
oh, probably three or four years. Irish horse originally. You see there the picket fence in its form line. One, 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 one. It run, won five starts in a row. And that finished with the Andrew Ramsden earlier in the year. Now, that was the race that balloted this horse into the field. This was the first horse in the Melbourne Cup. Very, very ordinary Geelong Cup race. It finished seventh behind Prince of Aaron. It's formed this preparation. Hasn't been quite up to speed of where it was last year. Uh, sorry, earlier in the year. But it may be that they're obviously just setting this as its grand final. It has shown that it does like the distance. Uh, it can run 3,200 metres, so it is a very, very good chance of that. Uh, similar to Surprise Baby, uh, both of these horses come across a similar form line. Uh, they will run the 3,200 metres out, but it's just a matter of whether they can do it quicker than a few other ones. Uh, the Chosen One. You are the Chosen One. For Murray Baker and Andrew Forsman. Uh, bit, number of a, 20. bit of a show favourite, the Chosen One. Definitely a show favourite. Uh, unfortunately, it will be finishing in the second half of the field in this one. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Currently, 101 in the mar- 100 to one in the market. I really, really can't see this horse uh, finishing in the top half of the field. Uh, so barrier 18 makes it hard. Uh, Tim Clark is solid enough jockey, but I think he'll be seeing a lot of rumps in the straight. Uh, now we get to the next horse, and this is the Aussie Chance. This is the Aussie Chance in Vow and Declare. Currently $12, around about fourth favourite in line. Um, Craig Williams jumps on board for Danny O'Brien. Finished second in the Caulfield Cup. Uh, has shown everything to indicate that it has massive staying ability. Has run over further distances. A uh, very, very young horse with 12 starts here in Australia. 52 kilos on its back is quite good. The fact that it's drawn 21 hurts it, but it will go back to the tail. So I'm thinking it's going to have to come from a long way back. Whether it can, look, at the end of the day, when you're coming from sort of last or second last in a field of 24 horses, there's going to be about sort of 15 lengths to make up. And whether it's got the sprint in it to do that at the end of 3,200 metres is a big, big question mark. So um, I'm hoping it can because uh, this will actually be in a few people's super coach teams and uh, is a very, very good chance. And the last one there is Young Star. Now, Young Star is 50 to 1. Uh, as you can see there from its form down the bottom, hasn't really run too many good races this year. Did finish sixth in last year's Melbourne Cup. He's currently 50 to one. So last year it started a little bit short than that. Ran a very, very solid race. Probably hasn't had as good a preparation this year in. So it's hard to see it uh, performing well. But barrier nine brings it into contention. 52 kilos on its back. Uh, probably got to give it a shot to finish in the top 10, uh, but may not worry the place getters. So, yeah. But, guys, that's the field. That's the 24 horses. That's my take on them. Just a quick recap of each one. Uh, Look, my tips for the race, as I say, I'm going to go Finch on top. Uh, I'm going to go Constantinople for second. I think those two horses will run the Quinella. Uh, I'm going to stay away from Murdergla. So, for me, Finch from Constantinople. I'm going to go Il Paradiso for third. And I will throw in, uh, where is it, Mustajir for fourth. So I'm going to go with an international first four. Uh, I'm going to leave out Val and Declare and Youngstar. I don't think the Aussies can do it this year. I do think it will be those international Raiders that take the cup home again. So just for those who are doing their offer sweeps, uh, who do you reckon is going to come last? Who do I think is going to come last? Get, get that uh, movie Nerf, prize Nerf in the offers. Sorry? Nerf, Nerf Boss. 150 to 1. Yep. Uh, Nerf Boss. Yeah, I think uh, from what I've seen this year, uh, well, not this year, in the last sort of six weeks. The few starts it's had here in Australia, it has been very, very average. Um, I thought it was a doubt at 3,200 metres before that. I really thought it was over here for the 2,000 and 2,400 metre races. It raced terrible in those. I can't imagine it getting any better in over 3,200 metres in the Melbourne Cup. So, yeah, for anyone who gets that in your sweep, I reckon you're a good chance to get the last place money. Uh, but let's, guys, while you're here, actually... Uh, one of the boys from Facebook has actually just messaged me while I'm uh, recording this, and the results for the Saturday Super Coach have come out. So I might just run through the BJ on Game Day League just quickly. So this week I scored 253 points. Uh, my season rank is 571. So I went down 41 spots, which wasn't too bad. I actually thought I'd go down a lot more than that. So um, a few people, other other people must have struggled this week. Uh, let's check out the rankings for the week. I know. 
Uh, Dan, my mate from PointsBet, he actually, he's the one who's just texted me. He's jumped up to 120th spot. He scored 303 this week, so he had a really good week. Uh, so he jumped up there. Uh, the guy who was leading last week has stayed on top, Jason, with No Sage Lodge. Uh, 1,645 points overall. Scored 259 this week, so only six points more than me. So I haven't fallen too much further behind, uh, but with only three rounds to go, it will be very, very hard to catch up 140 points. Definitely need to get the trifecta in the Melbourne Cup. Um, if anyone... So, yeah, so, if anyone so sort Chris, of Chris from um, Los Iglanobles, uh, he scored 200, uh, 287, and his He'll overall rank is, has went up to seven. Yeah, so he's moved up from 16th to 7th. So, uh, Chris, oh, well done, buddy, with Los Ingenables. Ingenables. Los Ingenables. Uh, oh, in, second, in second place, and we'll have the graphic up on the screen in edit. Can, but, uh, San, Santa, can Santa we get Iggy easier Lane. names, Chris? Oh. Can we get easier names? Uh, Ian with uh, Santa Iggy Lane. He scored 313. He's up he's, to 19th overall. He's moved up into 19th overall. And then in third place in the BJ and Game Day League, you've got Wilson's winners uh, from Sam. He scored 311, and he's yep. in 80, 83rd spot overall. Massive, massive week for them. So, guys, the top score for the week, let's just have a look at it here. 357. Uh, this guy's not in our league. Uh, he only moved up a few points overall, so his stable value is $2.7 million. He had Melody Bell as captain. He actually had all five of the Group 1 winners. So all five Group 1 winners from today. Melody Bell, Exceedance, Colding, Fierce Impact, Warning. He had Bivouac, which ran second. He had Downdraft, which won. Vegas Jewel ran, Jewel ran second. Zatori, Shadow Hero. And he had Huey Bowman as jockey with five points. So uh, well done to him. 357 points. Mate, you've won yourself a three-month subscription to KO. It won't mean shit if you don't win the twenty-five grand. <laughs> um, but yeah, so mate, tactically looking into this week, um, Melbourne Cup. We've got a Group One uh, for Super Coach players at home. Uh, we've got two other races that have got Group Three status. The rest are all listed and handicapped. Now the first race in Melbourne, I've noticed the fields come out for it. Let's just do a quick recap on that one. Um, it's your group. Uh, it's your group three. One of your group threes. The first race uh, kicks off at 9:55. Oh, sorry, 10:55 New South Wales time. 9:55 my Queensland time. Um, this is a race where you're going to have a lot of cheapies. A lot of cheapies. Anywhere between that 50,000 and that 150,000. Um, so you're probably going to want to have one or two, maybe even three runners in this. Definitely have a look at the market. This is generally a race where the favourites perform well, uh, but in recent years. Favourites have also been beat, but but by other sort of horses in the market. So it might not be the first favourite that wins. It might be the second or third one. So may pay to take a few horses in that race. Uh, now the other uh, the other race that is a Group Three. Give me one second. Let's just find it. The other race that's a Group Three is the Jim Beam Black Stakes. That's a good name. That is a that's good a name. Great, that's if I a owned, great if I owned a, a horse, I would be I focusing. I'd race. be focusing everything on that race. Okay, so run over, where is it, 1,400 metres, four-year-old and up for mares. Okay, so no colts in this one for mares. At the moment, your opening favourite is Jamaican Rain at $4. Sweet Scandal, $5. <laughs> now, this horse was actually scratched from today. But um, what do we got in this? Yeah, I know a few of the horses look uh, Sweet Scandal. That'll probably be one that's in my stable. I'm pretty sure it's only about 150, 200K. So, guys, the key will definitely this week to be picked probably three or four horses out of the Melbourne Cup. They will take up a good chunk of your uh, Supercoach salary cap uh, because they're all sort of 400 plus. Now, there are a couple that are a little bit cheaper. Horses like your Vow and Declare, Il Paradiso, I think are around 275K. So um, strategically, look, at the end of the day, if you run fourth in the Melbourne Cup, it's still going to be like picking a winner in one of the other races. Now, all the races here I'm seeing have got 12, 14, 16 horses in them. So um, it's it's not going to be any easier um, to, to pick a horse in one of those races. You know, there's a couple there that have got 10 horses in them. Uh, they might be your best bet. But uh, hard races all day, guys. It's going to be another tough one. You really want to get those first two or three horses in the Melbourne Cup. But uh, as plenty of people know, it's pretty bloody hard to pick the trifecta in the Melbourne Cup. But guys, that's it. 
Bogan, you got anything to add, champ? No, but uh, we'll just uh, let the viewers know that uh, this will probably be the last episode um, of the season. Yep. Because you're going on cruise. When will you be back? A few weeks? Uh, I'm back on the 15th. So I head off uh, on Monday, go on a little cruise through the Pacific Islands and all that kind of stuff. Uh, going to try and watch the race. Guys, I will interact. I'm going to jump on the internet while I'm on board, and I will interact. I'll try and get a few sort of tips and things like that. Um, if I can sort of post a video from out there, it's not going to be graphics or done by Bogan. Uh, so if I can get a five or a ten minute video up for the other two meetings, I'll definitely do that. But it'll just be me posting straight to YouTube without the graphics and the banners and things like that. So um, we'll do a wrap-up show just to congratulate, um, it looks like Chris at this stage. <laughs> Chris, oh, he's coming strong. Look, yeah, a massive week from Chris. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully we can we'll get be someone congratulating. from the BJ League yeah. winning. Mate, I, I'm going to go through the form extra hard tomorrow. I'm going to go through the form as best I can. And uh, I might even just send Chris a few tips. Um, so, Chris, oh, mate, reach out to me on Facebook and uh, through the BJ and Game Day page. And, mate, yeah, that, we can that, just do a little bit of strategy together. Though, though you are 7th and I'm yeah. 500. So, yeah, so probably that's not if you the feel, best thing listening to me. That's if you feel but, that you need tips from Josh. If you want to reach will, out to me on we'll Twitter, say, I will give you the horses with the funniest names. I will say, let, let's look back to let's look back to last week. And I did call it Exceedance beating Bivouac. I said it had turned the tables. I said it would make it to all. So the horses have raced against each other four times now. And it's one, two, lost two. Uh, I did say that Flit wouldn't win. Uh, unfortunately, I did say Vegas Jewel would win the race, and it finished second to Miami Bound. Uh, what else did we? What else did we predict? Uh, you said what? predicted that Long Jack would run well, and it ran shit. Yeah, uh, you predicted um, that Long Jack would win, and that would put you in the mind top you, ten. Mind you, I've got to have a, a massive gripe. Look, Craig Williams obviously tried something. Victoria Derby, twenty-five hundred metre race for three-year-olds. Um, very, very hard to lead a race. Especially when you're a horse that likes to come from behind. I and believe I, I believe I picked the winner of the Victoria Derby. Warning, did you? Yeah. How, what did you get this week? I only got 199. Didn't even crack the 200. I had one of my. I had one of my. I had one of my horses get scratched, and as has been whinged about oh, by oh, many a man. person, they you scratch your horse after deserve. lockout. Yeah. So you Mate, can't we'll you can't say, sub anyone in. But I mean, at the end of the day. 199 points, not too bad, mate. You've got to be happy with that, I reckon. Oh, I didn't crack the 200. 200 is always a for, mark. For the unique way that you select your teams, <laughs> I reckon that's pretty bloody good. So, mate, you'll have to look. You've only got 10 races this week. You're going to have to look to see uh, what kind of strategy you can come up with there because, uh, yeah, you may or may not be able to to put together a theme team or you might have to have a mixed theme, transgender, yeah. Yeah. a mixed team. <laughs> But yeah, it's not, it's it's not mixed, but anyway. <laughs> oh, mate, the fuck. They're a bit of mixed. Yeah, that t- that's Void Controversy right. Corner on this episode. <laughs> all right, no one's still watching, mate. We've been going an hour. No one's still watching. They've all turned it off by now. All right, guys, thanks very much. Uh, we'll, we'll catch you all. In two weeks. We'll catch you. No idea. Okay. All right, cheers.